Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the latest news and updates in relation to CMU Emulator, including its last two publicly released builds, versions 1.15.14 and version 1.15.15, which should be available to everyone right now to download using CMU's brand new update feature. As well as taking a look at these two new public builds, I'm also going to be taking a look at the Vulkan API and some upgrades that we've seen to those work in progress builds. At time of making this video, we are currently at CMU 1.16.0 work in progress 11, though we are due a new work in progress build in the next few days that is going to encompass everything we have in 1.15.14 and 1.15.15. As I said in previous videos, we have absolutely no estimated time of arrival for these Vulcan builds being free to everyone in the public, which is obviously going to be a little bit disappointing to anyone who's not currently able to support CMU Emulator's development on their Patreon and get early access to these builds. As soon as we have any information whatsoever about any kind of free public release, I will be sure to let you guys know as soon as I possibly can. So that's about enough of an intro for this video, let's jump straight into it and take a look at all of the changes coming in these new versions. First up, let's take a look at some general changes. Error messages which would previously pop up in a small little notification window all to themselves are now going to be actually rendered as part of the TV display output. This new implementation solves issues in games like Xenoblade Chronicles X and Super Smash Bros where when those error messages popped up, your game would be swapped from full screen mode back out into windowed. Next up, they have implemented an actual fully working software keyboard that not only works with your keyboard input, but also as you can see on screen works with controller input also. This is actually something that I myself requested a few update videos back and for anybody who uses CMU emulator for full screen exclusive couch gameplay, this is going to be a very, very welcome fix. I know it is going to be for myself. Next up, they fixed some regressions in relation to ELF file loading. This is a file type used for many homebrew applications, so if you are a homebrew developer or have been using any homebrew on CMU emulator, this issue is now completely fixed. Our next upgrade is one that I have personally been looking forward to for a very long time. The default game profiles that ship with CMU and the game profiles that users are able to edit are now going to be stored in completely separate folders. This change was made so that extracting all of your files from a CMU zip file into an existing CMU installation would not just completely delete and overwrite all of the settings changes you'd made to any of your emulated games. This update is going to save so many headaches for people setting up new or updating older versions of CMU and it's definitely a step in the right direction for keeping the emulator as easy to use as possible. Next up, we have something that is going to please a hell of a lot of people. CMU Emulator has now added full and complete support for both mono and stereo sound output. The implementation of surround sound support is something a lot of people have been asking for for a hell of a long time, and you can easily toggle it on from the general settings audio tab in the drop down window for your specific device, be it the TV or the gamepad. If you're looking for the most immersive experience possible in games that supported like Breath of the Wild, I would highly advise turning it on. Staying on the topic of some user interface changes, you can see here in the general settings graphics tab, they have added this new setting for showing you how much VRAM you are using. As with any other setting, all you need to do is click this little tick box and this is going to enable it in your overlay. This is a very welcome implementation, especially so for people who like to monitor how much VRAM their GPUs are using. Especially especially when comparing a performance at different resolutions. As far as we've been told, this VRAM indicator is only going to be available on operating systems of Windows 8.1 and above, so hopefully this is not going to be too much of an issue for anyone. Moving along swiftly once again, let's take a look at some new GX2 or graphical upgrades in these two new updates. First up, they have fixed stream out in combination with geometry shaders. This has fixed a crash in Fast Racing Neo on any NVIDIA driver past version 411.70. So if you've been experiencing crashes in that game on later drivers, this issue is now solved. 
They've also fixed a uniform cache crashing bug which would take place in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. So if you've ever experienced a crash when starting a new game, then leaving and re-entering the starting village, this issue is now completely solved. They've also fixed a graphical issue in relation to different languages being used but not properly identified by OpenGL. And the issue itself could cause a graphical corruption and issues with rendering when shaders that are unidentified it could not load. On top of all of this, they have added tweaks to the cache management of OpenGL. These tweaks are going to prevent internal out of memory crashes. These crashes would previously happen because in the past, CMU was only able to use a part of the VRAM on your GPU, whereas now it is able to use basically all of the VRAM available. And as a result, helps to fix two crashes. The first in Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge and the second in the previously mentioned Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. As I said at the start of this video, all of the changes mentioned previously are available to download and use right now. If you followed my full setup guide for CMU emulator, you should have turned on the auto updater. So to get all of these new upgrades, all that you need to do is run CMU emulator and it's going to automatically upgrade your CMU version. If you're having any issues with upgrading, please feel free to join my Discord and we can help you out in any way we possibly can. You'll find a link for that Discord down in this video's description. Okay, so as I also said at the beginning of this video, I'm also going to be taking a look at the Vulkan API in its latest release version 1.16.0 work in progress 11, so let's do that right now. First and foremost, I know a lot of you are going to be mostly interested in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and things have only gotten better and better as we have gotten newer work in progress builds. In this work in progress 11, they have completely fixed most of the graphical and shadow issues present in previous versions, and for both Nvidia and AMD GPU users, shader compilation time seems to have gotten even better than it previously was in older versions. The footage you're currently watching is of my NVIDIA GTX 1060 running the Vulkan API, but if I swap over to my AMD RX 580 8GB, you can also see that it is running absolutely amazingly, and similar to the 1060, it's also compiling and building its shaders absolutely lightning fast. Unfortunately, as with the older Vulkan builds I've showcased in the past, CMU's Vulkan API still does not have any kind of usable shader cache, so the reason you are seeing shader compilation stutter in my gameplay is because every time you reload the game, you're still going to have to rebuild your shader cache for Vulkan from the beginning. Regardless, as I've also said in the past, this is almost a non-issue. By the smoothness of gameplay while compiling my shaders in the top left hand corner, it is a pretty damn smooth experience and is a night and day difference from the OpenGL backend. A very cool bit of news we have just learned is the fact that in the next work in progress release, which is more than likely going to be a work in progress 12, any game that requires transform feedbacks is going to be playable due to a workaround that the developers are adding. This means that games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Smash Bros and Puck in Tournament are going to be bootable and playable on any iGPUs that have support for the Vulkan API. Staying on the topic of Super Smash Bros, Similarly to Breath of the Wild, it has also seen a significant graphical and performance upgrade. This game now no longer has massive graphical and bloom corruptions and for the most part seems fully playable on both my AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Once Intel iGPUs are supported, I will 100% be testing those out since I am very interested to see how the Vulkan API fares in respect to both visuals and performance in some of the more demanding games on CMU. Staying on Vulkan again and testing out one of the most popular games that you guys request me to test for compatibility, Xenoblade Chronicles X has unfortunately not seen much of a graphical improvement at least since work in progress 8. 3D graphics wise and performance wise it is very very good, staying at a locked 30 frames per second or even a locked 60 if I unlock it using the patch for the game. Unfortunately though these strange white vertex explosions are still present pretty much everywhere in the game so hopefully these will be fixed soon, bringing this game back to awesome playability just like it is on OpenGL. 
As always, I will be doing further game compatibility testing on the newest and latest Vulcan work in progress releases, so please, if there are any games you would like me to test out, please just ask me down below in the comment section of this video, or indeed over on my Discord server. That's pretty much going to be the end of this video, but before I go, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome, and as you know, you help me to pay for things like my electricity bills, water bills, internet bills, and every single game I require for testing in videos just like this one. So if anybody out there would like to help with the maintenance and running of my channel, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below and pledging your support. As I always say, these pledges and donations are absolutely not a requirement to get help from me here on YouTube or over on my Discord server, but they really, really do help me in running the channel, so to all of my past, present and indeed potential future supporters thank you guys very very much at the same time if you enjoyed this video please remember to leave it a like down below and if you would like to see all of my future uploads please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as i upload any videos once again guys thank you very much for watching have a great day and i will see you all in the next one